anyone who does any kind of DIY for anything will know that there's always one thing that you don't have. It's got to nip to the shop and get this type of screw or that type of bolt. Hello everyone and welcome to today's video. So as we mentioned in pretty much all of the most recent videos, we're getting very close to the end of the van build now because we're actually leaving in just over two weeks. So that means we're gonna be living full time in the van in just over two weeks, which is a bit scary. Uh, <laughs> so it's all the little, the last jobs. And when I say little, yeah, there's a lot of little ones, but we've still got a big one left. And uh, it's that. Yeah, we've got the roof, well, the ceiling to do. So what we've already started, let me show you, and we'll show you the rest of it as well today. So we've already began attaching the beams that we're gonna be fixing the cladding to. So what we've done is we've done one, two, three so far. The one at the back we couldn't finish because our um, glue gun broke, because we've been fixing it up with silicon as well. So that in the gaps here, there's still something in the way, so it won't like just bounce onto nothing. And then this one here, excuse the light, it's bright, but basically the rest of the ones that haven't been done, we had to um, fill them in with the expanding foam for insulation properties. So we did that, that's dried overnight. And now we can add the wood onto the rest of them. Part of the, um, the roof and the ceiling is that we need to attach wires through it and here Theo's just um spraying some white what are these boxes called it's uh, gone from me kind of like a junction box that's the type one thing yeah uh, to basically gland, protect it yeah that's it a gland, a gland <laughs> junction box or something but we managed to find one black one which was a double one but we didn't need double ones for the other ones and I could only find them in white uh, to be <laughs> delivered quickly so I bought single white ones and I'm spraying them black myself. So they will be going on the roof. So it's all intertwined with the roof and the ceiling and everything. So they've had one coat and now this is the, uh, the second coat. So yeah. So the wood that we're using for the cladding to attach to for the ribs is actually leftover wood that we had from when we were building the kitchen and it's 12 mil thick which is perfect so it's nice and flexible but it's not too flexible and it's thick enough to screw through here and stay nice so yeah it works brill and it's actually the exact same width as the rib i think it's like 40 something mil so we've been cutting them easily on the miter saw and slapping them up Let's show you. So what we've been doing throughout putting the beams on the ceiling that seems to work is running a bead of Sikaflex all the way along our beam and that is just to stop any vibrations later on and just make sure we've got that solid secure beam in place. So I'm just going to run the Sikaflex now. Just in a kind of zigzag pattern. Don't need to go overboard, but get plenty on there to fill in the gaps. All the way along. There we go. That should do the trick. So I'm just going to drill my pilot hole through the wood and through the metal beam. And then we're going to use a one inch self tapper. So Theo's just filling in any extra gaps with the Sikaflex. Okay guys, so in the last vlog, apologies for the working noise. In the last vlog, we said we had something exciting to show you, which we did actually show on the live stream, but you might not have caught that. Uh, so we're gonna show you what it is. So, this is an Ivor William 505 horse box trailer. This can take a lot of weight in it because it's meant to be taking, well, it's meant to be used for taking two horses in it. So it's a double wheel axle, really good, amazing condition. 
and we're super happy because this is going to transport all of our stuff to Portugal, all of our belongings are going in there, all of our tools, everything. And then when we get to Portugal, this is going to be used for guest accommodation. So we're going to do a whole series on converting this trailer into a beautiful, rustic kind of trailer, cabin, something like that. So people have got somewhere to stay when they come on our land, which is very excited. It's even going to have a wood burner. So yeah, that's cool. But yeah, this is, this is it. It's in good condition. The workshop's a bit of a mess at the moment. Just a bit. This is my little <laughs> spraying station. So I've got some uh, standoff brackets for the solar panel that I've just been spraying black and spraying all the bolts black as well, just so they blend in nicely with our roof rack. So yeah, here's a side shot of the other side. There's so many entrances to this horse box. You can see the um, double axle. She is a beast. Of course she's a she and uh, she's got handy things for balancing our lights on which is useful <laughs> and also propping up our solar panel which is useful and it's a lot bigger than we thought we can't show you inside right it's now full of our crap because it's full of our <laughs> rubbish that we need to sort out and get rid of but it's a lot bigger than we thought it was so we're gonna have a great time converting it because actually the space in there is going to be more than enough for people who want to stay on the land so it's really good and this drops down here yeah this will be a really nice like platform down here which will be cool yeah so maybe we can have like a little terraced area something like that we're going to put lots of windows in it make it nice and light and bright it's got another entrance over the other side because obviously two at the you front. bring the horses through the back and then out through the side as well so there's more than enough room in this beast there is and also i don't know if you spotted down here stick pins a lot of you guys have been concerned for many months now and i don't blame you about our ceiling so yesterday we began insulating the ceiling cutting all the sellotex we had a load of bits of sellotex left over so it wasn't like a big massive sheet but there was loads of smaller pieces that fit perfectly in the ceiling beams so these are really handy they mean that we haven't got to use any glue to stick the insulation to the ceiling and they were actually one of the first things we bought when we did the van conversion we didn't realize at the time that we were actually going to be doing the ceiling last but there you go <laughs> so they're all primed and ready to go on the ceiling we already put a few up they wedged in very nicely, one of them as tight as possible and in any of the gaps we'll be putting some nice expanding foam we can't do the front one and we can't do the one right at the very back because we've got wires to come through there so this is our solar panel she's a 335 watt LG neon tube black solar panel she is a beast, we drove down to Brighton and collected her from Bimble Solar a few weeks ago now and today She's going up there. Once the brackets are dried, we're gonna mount her. And I'm so excited for that. Cause then that means we can finally drill the holes in the roof and start to fit things in. So now all of the little pieces for the solar panel are ready. We get to install our 4G booster from Motorhome Wi-Fi. This is one of the most exciting things that we're going to be installing on our van. Because obviously you guys know that we work from the van. And I know a lot of you ask us, how do you get Wi-Fi? How do you get data abroad or in the UK? And this thing is gonna help us stay connected so we can keep uploading videos for you guys. It's actually really easy to install. There's a few different methods. And one of the methods is literally just stick it straight to your roof, really simple. And that's great if you've got a flat roof. If you haven't got a flat roof, they sell this um, standoff bracket, which is really useful. So if you've got, I don't know, a ridge in your roof and you can't get it nice and flat, then you can use this. We got this because we are going to be installing it onto our roof rack because I'm really funny about how many holes I'm going to be putting in the roof. But also, I wanted to be able to move everything around on the roof rack if at a later date, I want to rearrange things so everything on our roof rack can be moved all the way around the roof rack including the solar panel so that is what i'm going to do with this so what i've got this doesn't quite fit between the ridges uh, on our roof rack so what i'm going to do is i've got this piece of uh 
L bracket metal that I've cut to shape, cut to size, should I say. And that is gonna go on there like that. Obviously I'm gonna spray it black so yeah. it all ties in nicely. It looks a bit mental right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, when it's finished, it will look really nice. And that will allow me just to get to the points on the roof rack where I need to bolt it down to. So I've just drilled an M8 hole in here and I'm gonna do the same here. And I just got this new tool yesterday that I'm really excited about. It's a, a step drill bit. So you just select your size, make sure you know how far you need to go down, but this creates a really clean hole. Much better than using a standard drill bit for something like this. So what I've done is I've just added some M6 holes into the side of this bracket. So basically I can mount this bracket to this bracket and then I can bolt this bracket to the roof rack and it looks like it's all gonna line up really nicely, which is good. Might need to nip out to the shop to get a few more bolts. But yes, we don't have enough nuts as well, I don't think. Well, the wrong size. Anyone who does any kind of DIY for anything will know that there's always one thing that you don't have. It's got to nip to the shop and get this type of screw or that type of bolt, no, whatever. So yes, I think we're gonna to have to get some, but that's okay. Gives us a break from the, from the workshop. And I need to go to the post office and post some merch as well. Thank you guys who have bought that. Always brings a smile to our face when we see people wearing our t-shirts or posting our stickers that they've put on their van or their laptop or something, that's really cool. So the brackets are completed. I've just bolted it to the 4G booster stand-up bracket and it fits perfectly and it looks great as well. So that will look really tidy on the roof. And yeah, so if you're not sure what the 4G booster does, it can boost the signal up to four times. So a lot of the time we'll be in an area where we're not quite in range for 4G and this will now make us in range and it makes sure that we can keep bringing you videos and just keep updated, which is important because obviously it's our job. So yeah, definitely recommend going to check out Motorhome Wi-Fi. Check them out, they're really good, very affordable. I definitely recommend it. Shall we attach it to the roof? Yeah, let's go. So here it is in all its glory, looks really good. And literally I can just bolt it into the slats, which is brilliant. And that is why I did this design so I can move it around. But yeah, go and check out Motorhome Wi-Fi. I'll link them in the description. So this little gadget here is the second part of the 4G booster which goes inside of your van. It attaches onto the antenna here by a magnet so you can have it mounted on the wall. It's got a constant power supply from your 12 volts so it's always on and on the screen here when it's plugged in you can see exactly what signal you've got and all that sort of stuff. So once we've got our power hooked up on Friday we'll be able to test this bad boy out. So now the 4G booster's on the roof. The next thing to put on the roof is our humongous solar panel. So we've started putting the brackets on that we modified. Theo's just started to um, mount them onto the edge and once they're on both sides, we can lift it onto there. So we didn't film actually putting the solar panel on the roof because it's big, heavy and difficult. <laughs> so now the solar panel is on the roof and the 4G booster and the light bar, the next thing to do is drill some holes in the roof, but we've never drilled holes in the roof, so we're doing some testing on an old piece of the roof that we had when we got the skylight put in. So Theo's drilling the holes now, testing it out, and then tomorrow we're gonna drill the holes. Just trying to figure out what grommets fit different wires because we've got three different holes and three different wires, so that fits nicely in there. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Quite a lot has happened in this vlog and there's lots more to come. So stay tuned and we'll see you on the next video. Head over to theindieproducts.com forward slash shop and check out our new merchandise. Join us on Patreon for exclusive content and don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you never miss a video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.